welcome to a new episode of Outside the Panels with your host, Johnny the Machine Hughes. Welcome everyone to an episode of Outside the Panels. Yes, I am your host, Johnny the Machine Hughes. It's hard to tell because I'm dressed smart for a change. That has no clue to what we're going to be talking about. Sorry to disappoint. We are, however, going to talk about yet another fantastic Kickstarter. This time around, we are getting a bit of a mix as Blade Runner meets the Black Mirror. I'm talking to 10, sorry, ID 10 Terror writer creator matt mcgrath matt how's it going you all right i'm good i'm good thanks for having me on you are more than welcome so your book i've described as a bit of a blade runner meets black mirror is that a fair assessment blade runner meets black mirror um yeah i usually you know i usually say it's hostile meets short circuit Uh oh uh... short circuit yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah now people are going to cry are people gonna cry? Um, yeah, everyone cries at short circuit, you know. You know what? I've never seen circuit short short circuit, but everybody that's read this tells me it's a lot like short circuit. So oh, I'll yeah. just I'll take their word for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see that. I see that. You know, uh, it it's got some. Te- it definitely has some tearjerker moments, especially in the end. There's a there's a yeah there's a I won't spoil it, but a little one of the we lose one of the characters in the end. So oh, maybe no. maybe you'll shed a couple of tears, a couple of laughs, a couple of tears, a couple of screams. <laughs> everything the whole range the whole range of human emotions yeah. <laughs> right so what's the what's the what's the four one what's the deal what's the story behind id 10 terror mm-hmm. okay so it is like i said it's a kind of like short circuit meets hostile so it's a it's a sci-fi horror comedy and it's about a dude who spends years of his life toiling in his basement trying to create this advanced ai robots um not because he wants to you know further science or humanity or create this amazing thing or (laughs) you know make millions of dollars off of it he does it solely so he can uh immediately torture and kill it once it's perfected Um, oh a puppy (laughs) a little bit yeah 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 so of course you know once this thing this robot gains sentience it's not really into that idea yeah. So the the rest of the story from there is the AI desperately trying to escape escape its crazy creator and and Bradley the our mad scientist um you know doing everything he can to exact his revenge against his creation. So that's the first issue. The second issue uh without getting to any spoilers, yeah, the AI spoiler. manages to escape. So hooray, good for them. Hooray. Um but uh of course Bradley he he's He's not going to give up that easily. So I'm it's a, yeah, <laughs> he, he tracks the AI down across the city of Toronto. So their kind of madcap cat and mouse game kind of continues right. throughout okay. the streets of Toronto. And uh, yeah, that's where issue two takes us. So issue one's been, already been a successful Kickstarter, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, right. yep. It was uh, kickstarted uh, last year or 2020. Um, uh, yeah, so that for that first one, it was a digital only release. So right. with this second one i am um producing the second issue and printing it and i'm kind of going back in uh printing issue one as well so you can get issues one and two and print for the first time with this kickstarter okay cool what is it that that made you want to kind of mix up these genres because you know short circuits a lovey dovey film you know mm-hmm. 25's alive I, I have a bit of a hate for the movie myself because i used to get called that all the time at school thanks <laughs> okay Thanks sorry. for bringing my, back, back my no, PTSD. Sorry about that. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, the idea you create a cute, a cute character, whether it be a robot, whether it be some sort of like an animal type thing, and then the pro, the, the, the only reason it's there is to torture it. You know, yep. this seems like a quite a dark, dark path to lead. It is. Yeah. What, what, uh, was, the, what was the inspiration for that sort of? I mean, the, the influences are there but what makes mm. you think oh yeah I wonder if the guy wants wants to uh beat up his own creation yeah um it, like the the inspiration i guess was uh, with, 
Um, I always have to be like coy about this because the, the inspiration is a little bit of a spoiler for the kind of this. All right, okay, yeah, fair enough. That's fair yeah, out. Yeah. But like to kind of walk around it, um, yeah. just my frustrations with technology. You know, everybody oh, has frustrations with my laptop, for instance. Like it crapped out um, a day before the Kickstarter launch. So, All right. yeah, it's just like when you have these things that you rely upon so much for your day to day life, just randomly uh give out on you there's yeah. there's just so much frustration frustration there um and there's no outlet to vent that rage because you're just faced with this inanimate object that has cannot understand what you're feeling so <laughs> with bradley uh he take something similar happens to him and he takes that frustration to um just the most unbelievable lengths we can imagine <laughs> actually creating something to life yeah. just so he can get re his revenge on it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of where the, the 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 comedy and the horror aspect of it just yeah. kind of comes very naturally out of that premise that I had. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the comedy, I mean, it's not really a ton of jokes in the book per se. Mm. Maybe a couple, but it's it's the comedy. I, I feel like comes more just from the absurdity. Of the yeah, situation definitely. just this yeah. just the lengths that this guy will go to to exact his revenge against something that most of us would you know just brush off after like yeah. an hour of frustration um yeah. so yeah that, that's <laughs> just a weird the weirdness of that I, I, I suppose i mean there's there's different levels of horror when we when we talk about horror there's the gore there's the the shock and all that sort of stuff same applies for comedy so for for the book looking through this it seems to me, there's a lot of um, situational comedy mm -hmm. from where from where the characters are, and that's that that leads to, to a comedic element, and also um, a little bit of slapstick in there. Yep, there's, for sure. So, so you kind of you've got these you've got the slapstick comedy, and then the innate terror of what's going to happen to the AI, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's a that's a bit of an arc. Do you think there's a do you think there's a relationship between comedy and horror? Um, I'm sure there is. I haven't thought about it too much. Um, You're like, damn it, why is he asking me this question? <laughs> <laughs> that, that question's way too smart for me. Um, uh, yeah, you know, like when you bring up the kind of slapstick uh, aspect of it, I guess, yeah. I don't know, a lot of great comedies come from the suffering of these characters. Mm. Um, I don't know. I'm just thinking, like, you brought up slapstick, so I'm thinking Charlie Chaplin and... Yeah. Um, Buster yeah. Keaton, like these guys um, in real life, like yeah. suffered for their art. They, I remember Buster Keaton, I think there's one really famous scene where he's kind of hit in the butt by a train or something. Right. And like, it's hilarious, but in reality, like he like it's broke his like hip or something yeah. like that, or really <laughs> badly injured himself yeah. trying to get that shot. Uh, yeah, so I guess there's just the, the close relationship there. And I don't know. Yeah. Um, taking enjoyment out of the suffering of our main characters, but in, I guess, different context. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Should we have a quick look? Let's have a look. There look. you go. Here we go. There you check it out. There's uh, the big bad in the, in the there background there. You can yeah. tell he's a bad guy because he's got a beard. Mm -hmm, I'm saying mm -hmm. that we've both got beards. So, uh, uh, I'm not a good guy. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a self-portrait then? You know, he, he, <laughs> he had a very distinct character design at the beginning, but for some reason, once we started getting to the book, he really morphed into me. So, yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is I better be nice. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, I might stick my, a, uh, Apple Mac, right? <laughs> yeah, I might stick my AI after you. <laughs> and, of course, there's the, um, there's the AI. Giving it there the, is. the frightful looks over his shoulder as he mm -hmm. legs it across the page. Um, cool. So I have to say, I'm a bit of a visual, I'm a bit of a visual person. Mm -hmm. So when I see ID 10 terror, yeah, I see the word idiot. Was mm -hmm. that is that planned? Please tell me it was planned. Yeah, it's actually uh, it, it, it's an inside joke, I think, with programmers. Ah, so okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really had. I'm, I'm terrible at coming up with titles for my things. So, the uh, last thing for the first issue, the last thing I did with the script was come up with the 
the, the title. So uh, yeah, it's just like looking for inspiration. Then I came across this like inside joke for idiot air. So it's kind of like uh... um, if you went to your IT team and you know you you complain that your laptop isn't turning on. And you know the issue is because you it was ran out of batteries. Uh, they might come back with you, and be like, "Oh yeah, that's an ID ten T error. Yeah, we'll, we'll take uh, care see. of that." And so, yeah, yeah. So it's so we have a joke when yeah we have a different thing. We call it picnic. Oh, okay, picnic. Pro- picnic problem in chair, not in computer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one too. Okay. I got it. Yeah, next the name yeah, is people. Yeah, feel free. Yeah, to. P1 NC. <laughs> mm, yeah. mm, okay. Yeah. Just some put ideas me, now. Yeah, just put me put me a name somewhere, I'll be fine. Okay, yeah, Picnic. cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um so creator, how what type of writer are you when you come to sort of like handing over your script? Are you very are you a takeover Ted? Are you put the details, or do you kind of use the more generic Marvel way where you say like this is what I kind of want let mm-hmm. it knock itself out or do you kind of get really involved in the creation process uh yeah a little bit of both I'd say um mm-hmm. you can tell like from reading my script where like I started the day writing mm-hmm. and then where I ended the day because like my my I start off like writing these really really descriptive panels like these Alan Moore type things where I'm going into like what the characters are feeling really uh-huh. the details of their faces and then you know I don't know after three hours on page four or something and I'm just like <laughs> Bradley punches the AI that's it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, uh, yeah I work uh, for this I I try and go as detailed as I can with the caveat always that like with Octavio or any other artist I'm working on. You know, if you have a better idea of how to stage this, then go for it. Like, yeah, that, that's totally cool. Uh, there, there is one sequence in uh, the first issue where it was kind of written Marvel style. Okay. Uh, there is one scene where Bradley, uh, after he leaves the AI for the first time and goes back into his office, and he's just mm-hmm. kind of like chilling out there and decompressing. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really know what to write for that scene, so I just in the script I just put like. Bradley goes back to the office. And that, was, that was it. And then, yeah, Otavio kind of took that and ran with it, and he kind of created this two-page scene. Okay. Um, and then after that is when I went and did the dialogue, and um, yeah, that was really cool. Um, it's I probably wouldn't have come up with that. This is probably the only scene in the book where you kind of feel maybe a little bit sympathy for Bradley. You got to mm-hmm. get a sense of how lonely and sad this dude's life is so Mm -hmm. uh yeah there's there's probably going to be another scene like that there's one in in issue two there's one scene that i haven't written and i I swear i'll get to it but i don't know Otavio might catch up with me and then he'll go (laughs) now take a break i'll I'll kind of this one okay so obviously bradley's gone through some stuff Mm. and he's reacted in this extreme manner potentially do you feel then that, um, how can I put this? Mental health is such a huge, huge uh, factor for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that Bradley's um, situation represent represents mental health for people who are in that kind of uh, situation where they feel a little bit out of control, they feel at the mercy of, you say, as the, of the machine, of the... God damn it, my, my why won't my computer come on Arr, and the whole day getting away from them? It's that extreme reaction, isn't it? That kind of, you know, that that zero to I want to kill somebody in like six seconds that you're yeah. trying to avoid. Is that kind of like a is that, is that kind of like a, a view of mental health for yourself sometimes or some 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 trauma that can cause that? Hmm. That's like a good <laughs> point. You know, I'd never <laughs> thought about the mental health of Bradley in this the story. I've always thought Bradley was like, I don't know, the absolute villain of the story. And uh-huh. I, I've never really intended there to be any sympathy for him. Um, yeah, he's kind of inspired by, you know, I don't know, all these kind of incel type people and okay. uh, these just angry young men uh, that, mm-hmm. you know, is plaguing our society right now. And, there's just they have so much anger um mm-hmm. and it's always focused on something so you know meaningless and destructive and it's just a complete like waste 
of life and potential, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, like, the, 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 that's really interesting you brought that up. I guess you have a softer spot for Bradley than, than I well, do. No, no, I, no I, I, it's just from the outside looking in. You mm -hmm. know, somewhere, I mean, every villain, every villain has, mm -hmm. his, has his origin or her origin piece, mm -hmm. right? If somebody has an extreme reaction, an, an extreme emotional reaction like this, mm -hmm. in my head, I'm thinking something's happened to him somewhere along the line. Yeah. And that, now I'm interested in what it is that's happened to him. Yeah? As, mu yeah. as, much, as much as I'm interested in how he attacks his AI or how the AI gets out of various little, you know, cat and mouse things i'm kind of think, thinking to myself hmm why mm. is he doing that i don't know maybe maybe i'm looking a little bit too deep and i should just no, sit back and no, enjoy the, so. enjoy the think, chaos yeah 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 <laughs> i feel like in issue two you'll kind of get a little more insight into him uh -huh. into his background um uh yeah i feel like no nothing really okay. that traumatic cool. happened to him <laughs> and that's really what makes him the villain like he's oh, yeah. he's had a pretty good life like he's gotten it's just bad for bad sex then <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he's he's gotten like every chances he can get he's had help and at every turn he kind of turned it away and he's kind yeah. of embraced this anger um because cool. uh yeah i guess there's this underlying self-hatred okay. uh, about him um so yeah that's, i mean definitely. the reason i brought it up I, I was looking through some of the promo stuff you sent mm, and okay. I kind of focused on this page where he's kind of like, he seems like at that point in this middle panel here, he seems like, yeah, all right, something's happened. And then as the panel gets further along the page, you mm -hmm. can see he goes from like, I'm knocked to angry to I am going to rip somebody's head off. And that's quite a short, short journey. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was just kind of the more, I suppose, yeah, it's yeah, part, part of it. Part of it's the story. It has to be like that. And the other part of it, in my head, is kind of like what causes someone to go from zero to sixty in that. That yeah. I kind of think that. Um, I'm going to say that the who's your artist on this second book? Uh, Otavio Colino. And speaking of which, Otavio is actually the guy right there that Bradley's uh, tugging on. That he uh, there, he inserted okay. himself into the story here. So yeah. All right. Okay. There I is. hope he's I hope he's not paying royalties on that. Um, <laughs> so I want I want to I want to hands up I want to give a massive applause because this panel here where Bradley's looking bonkers and mm. his eyes are all like you know I think that's a great panel that yeah. works so so well and I, I, when you look at some of the other elements and it's kind of got your slapstick going on and you've got the the AI moving through or being tied to a chair or whatnot you know I think this this page when I looked through them this was the one that kind of got me like. Wow, I'm intrigued. So, oh, cool. well done, well done on that one. Yeah, Absolutely. good job, Tavio. Yeah, yeah, cool, excellent. Uh, this is a mature book, so there are um, a little bit of swears, a little bit, little, little, well, little, little bit of f bombs well, yeah. in there, which is totally fine. So, if you are using the Kickstarter, bear that in mind, kids. Yeah, uh, adult supervision, please. <laughs> yeah, don't use the phone without the bill payers' permission. Yeah, <laughs> steal uh, your parents' credit card, but um, yeah. make sure that they know there are swears in the book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shh. don't say things like that. You'll get me shot. Yeah. Um, all right. So if we change of pace, I mean the the that third, that panel we've just looked at, that page we've looked at, quite emotive, quite light heart, well, light color scheme at least. Whereas then you've got the kind of the the Times Square version of wherever this is. Mm, There's, oh, you've yeah. Got, yeah, you've got the bus, you've got, and it seems a, another different style. Did did you guys try to, 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 is that done on purpose or is that just how the book ended up? Uh, it, a little bit, you same? know, uh, Kay Baird is a colorist on this book and okay. I kind of took a position of being like super hands off with the, the color scheme. I think I, for this book, I told her, um, you know, I'm kind of looking for something that's like a 90s action buddy comedy. Oh, and okay. that was kind of like her prompt to kind of go wild. Uh, so yeah, I also told her like go wild. Like the, the first book, everybody praised her colors, especially in, in the scenes in the basement where you get those mm -hmm. like really vibrant reds and blues. 
Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I really like this page. Like, I just think it's this dusk kind of color, this kind of yeah. neon um view of toronto uh this is actually set in dundas square which is our version of times square but like ah, way way cool. way 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 less cool it's kind of a <laughs> not that great yeah, uh, but uh the Soho version. <laughs> yeah it's it, it, she she really captured the kind of feel of um toronto like in in the dusk in this kind of area and especially it feels like kind of a i don't know like a fall spring yeah. like it's a little crisper outside mm -hmm. um yeah that's a good page i like it i like the difference i like the differences between the two i like the contrast mm -hmm. you know so i really quite like that excellent. yeah it's a great good page show. excellent um i have uh issue one here we'll have a look through issue one as it's out sure. already and therefore you know there's no spoilers we don't have to worry about that yeah mm -hmm. um before we get to that here's an advert for one of our shows in fact this is a new advert for one of our mainstay shows on the ucpn this is our brand new advert for the definitive crusade check it out <laughs> The Definitive Crusade, all about DC Comics dropping alternate Wednesdays. There you go. Right. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, nice advert, that one. Yeah, it looked nice really one. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, watch the show, even though Matthew loves Red Hood. Don't hold that against him. Thank you very much. All right. So <laughs> this is issue one. Um, yes. Pretty much the cover does, does what it says. Yeah, he's completed it. Oh. He's created great creation, and now he wants to destroy it. So it's kind of got it right here. Hey, hey hold on a second. Then let's let's do something a little bit crazy. Then let's remove that, make you bigger. Okay. Whoa, oh, there. Check it out. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. That was there we go. Actual yeah. cool comic. Something cool too. This is oh, I don't have a comic on me, but this is a uh, this is a four size, so it's uh, right, okay. a bit bigger than your average comic. So. So, yeah. so if you go to bag and board it, speak to your comic book shop. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might you might hate me for that bag and board it, but you know you can make, you can probably fit it on your shelf too. It's nice and sturdy, yeah, and yeah, yeah, so yeah, put it on I mean, your shelf look at, look at all the the black label books DC are doing right now. They were mm -hmm. non, yeah. non standard size. Yeah. Um. So we'll take we'll use this book. We will have a quick look through some of the art. Um. It is a a book that starts off dark. Look, I love the colors here. This dungeon mm -hmm. scene. Totally. Yeah. And then you've got you know the the initial torture element going on. There's a bit that I like in this bit that he says, um, help someone's turn me into a into a machine. I'm like he hasn't quite caught what's going on there. Yeah. He, bless his cotton socks. Yeah, I think that happened. Cool. There it is. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's a good that's a weird yeah. piece yeah. of dialogue that I really like. <laughs> yeah. And then you kind of like, oh wait. Um <laughs> This is actually my favorite page in the whole book. Uh, really? One of Excellent. them, yeah. There's two yeah. that I really love, and this is one of them, yeah. Cool. It, it, I just, it's evocative. It, it's, it's strange. There's an odd, there's an odd contrast, I think, on this page, massively. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah. the, the, the colors are all about the horror. Yeah. But the dialogue is all about the comedy. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's so, a good point. So you're like, what? So if you want a page that uh, sort of encapsulates the idea or the, the theme of comedy and horror, boom, this is your page because it's yes. it's it's there, isn't it? You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's really impressive, really, really impressive. Hard to, and the guy's so cute, you know. You just can't help but feel sorry for the AI. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. bless his bless his cotton little socks. Yeah. Oh, old oh, guy. Sad. He's very he's a very affable AI. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. he'd have to be, wouldn't he? Right? If he was a if he was a badass, he'd be like, yeah, just kick him to the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You would toaster like sigh on him. <laughs> yeah, there'd be no story. He'd be like, yeah, go go for yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, kill him, kill him, do it. Um, there is another character. Did I see? There's a little. Is there? A, there we go. Yeah. Who's this little dude? Burpo. Is Burpo is... Where's Burpo? What's the inspiration for Burpo? The inspiration for Burpo. Uh, so I guess the direct inspiration for him is he's supposed to be like a Furby type uh, children's toy. So oh, okay. um, he's kind of like the, he's the Igor to, or Igor, I'm thinking of the Mel Brooks version, Igor oh, okay. to um, uh, Bradley's Frankenstein. Uh, so yeah, he's kind of like his helper, and he he also kind of takes a, a liking to the AI and, and has is sympathetic towards his plight. So, yeah. in my head, like the Burpo was Bradley's kind of first forays into um, creating an AI. So a very yeah. primitive thing to kind of uh, as like a proof of concept. Um, yeah, the name Burpo actually comes from a, um, a a Christian writer. He he wrote this book about his kid like dying and then going to heaven like it's called heaven is for real i think it's really popular okay. but i used to work at a bookstore and i had to shelf that book all the time and the guy's name was todd burpo ah, okay. um so i just thought it's that was, yeah, yeah very very amusing to me so i always wanted to use it so this was like cool. the perfect spot to use it this page is the thing that made me think of blade runner there's that there's that scene in the, mm, the blade runner yeah. movie where you meet the, the the guy that worked for the factory and he goes in he's got yes. all these little toys kicking around all these little mini robots as the replicants come to mm -hmm. him for their help, that's what this page reminded me of. That's what I thought. Yeah, oh, you're right. Like, you're right. Yeah. I never saw that before, but yeah, I totally get that now. Yeah, cool. cool. I'm feeling a lot better about myself. I really like Blade Runner. Yeah, there you go. Blade Runner yeah. reference, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it, it, it just struck me as I saw it. I was like, oh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about comics is the influences can be so innocent and it can be like oh and it just it creates that level of emotion so it really yeah. it really works um so let's get to the nitty-gritty of some of this are you a comic book fan other than create them are you reading comics right now uh i am yeah let's see behind me i got all my lawn boxes so I, I do impressive. read them yep excellent what's your what's your two of the force at the moment what you're enjoying <sighs> Huh. Um, but, 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 I'm reading so much and just trying to like keep up with everything. Oh, dude, don't, don't. I've got a, I've got a pile of comics like nobody's business that I'm, yeah, I'm plowing yeah, through. I'm slowly but surely getting through them. Um, uh, I was reading Detective Comics last night. Uh, oh, okay. I'm really behind on that, but Mariko Tamaki, I think her name is. She's doing like yep. a really cool run. Uh, yeah. Also, hey, another Toronto writer. So. It's yeah. cool. I like it, the Toronto writers. Also, Chip Zdarsky, like doing the Daredevil run. Oh, um, isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Yep, love it. Did, did you read uh, what's the mini event that just came out? Ooh, uh, the King, no, the I forget it. It's right over there. Devil's Rain. Devil's, Devil's Rain. Rain. Yeah, yeah. If you read uh, that I haven't yet. read it yet. No, I, wow. I'm uh, I'm waiting to kind of like binge. Yeah, uh, issue, issue, issue four. Issue four is an absolute peach. Nice. The conclusion of issue four is like, whoa. Cool. It, is, it is probably, and I'm not a huge Marvel fan, but mm -hmm. it's but it's one of the, across the board, it is one of the best books I've read this year. Yeah. That was written number four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm looking so, forward to it. Yeah. And, you know. Also, really looking forward to his Batman, Batman run when that starts, I think, in July. Yeah. So. Yeah, that that's probably going to be my new favorite book. I'm I'm calling it now. It'll be <laughs> come the summer. That'll be my like, my go to book. That right, yeah. goes to the top of my pile. Yeah, I recently said when I wrote a review for uh, Comic Crusaders over one of the Daredevil books that Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil run for this generation will be as important as the Frank Miller run is yeah. for that generation. High praise. 
I, I just think it is. I think it's just absolutely, you know, the whole lady daredevil thing works really mm-hmm. well. And I think that's what I think that's one of the things Marvel do great is that they do um, their female led characters brilliantly, even though they've cancelled Spider Woman and Black Widow. But you know, yeah, they'll be back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Lady Thor was was fantastic to the point where yeah. she's getting the movie. So mm-hmm. there you go. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, that's an awesome thing about Daredevil. It's probably why it's my favorite ongoing because every single run is like in its own way, like super long. Like it's probably yeah. the consistently. Everybody's got like at least fifty issues on Daredevil, mm-hmm. which you don't really get with any other character. Yeah, and like everybody does like their career best work on that title for whatever reason. Like Bendis, mm-hmm. uh, Bruce Baker, arguably. I mean, he's got lots of career best work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank Miller, um, mm-hmm. Charles Soule, uh, See, Mark Wade. That's kind of like his big yeah. comeback again in the the two thousand tens. So um, I like I like Miller's Year One. Year One is my favorite Miller. Year One. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for that, sure. that, that's people tell me how dark, how great the Dark Knight uh, Returns is, and it is. It's a good book, but it's when you really read it now with twenty twenty two eyes, it's just super satirical. It doesn't, it doesn't have back back in the eighties. It's like wow, I can't believe how. But now you just read it, it's like yeah, it's, it's a satire more than anything. Okay, I won't go back and read it then. Well, no, right, hey, each their own. Each their own. <laughs> Excellent, and um, so. You're you're a you're a superhero guy then? I am, yeah, yeah. I, I'd say superhero is my bread and butter, but I I also really love my like indie slice of life dramas. Um, you can't really see here, but I have my sh- bookshelf here of all my graphic novels, and on one side I got like my my fantasy graphics drawn in quarterly, like okay. uh, yeah. self published stuff, and then on the other side I got all my Vertigo, DC, Marvel, Image, all that stuff. So okay. yeah, I, do I like you think? Both. Do you think Kickstarters and indie books have, have kind of surpassed what Vertigo tried to do originally? Hmm. Um... The reason, I'll give you I'll, I'll give you some context. The hmm. reason I ask is there's a new Sandman book out, um, and we looked at it recently. And when I read it, I thought, you know what? I've seen loads of indie books do this better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, whereas Sandman back in the day, the game and run everyone was like wow this is the best type of comic art comic reading you get it's such an experience now you get a whole range of different independent companies doing vertigo style books yeah um, i mean images image um uh vault um dark horse vault, like they're all doing the kind of yeah, yeah. what vertigo was doing in the 80s and 90s yeah, so um yeah I mean, it's course. sad that vertigo isn't around anymore but i guess like why would you do it in the creator owned book at DC when part of the contract is like, oh, we're going to own half of your, yeah. your, yeah. you know, the yeah, title yeah. anyways, and yeah. we're going to have control over it. Or, you know, I could just take that idea and do it at Image and I get full ownership over it. Yeah. So, yeah, in that way, yes, it, it kind of vertigo and became a little bit obsolete and yeah. sad to yeah. see it go. But, you know, that we, if it, all that, all those great titles have kind of, moved on to other publishers it's it, yeah but yeah definitely uh, you know and that that creates the marketplace for for books like um id 10 Terror. Terror. ID, Terror. i call it id 10 t error or idiot error, idiot uh, error but yeah. there's definitely the terror in there like yeah, yeah. The, the coloring frank oh, did yeah. a good job frank so, uh, did the lettering and the logo so yeah he... uh, the lettering i've got to say the lettering has a has a an interesting take mm-hmm. um i like how the lettering can convey so much emotion. Yeah. Yeah. It's very yeah. it's not it's not as formulaic as, as you may see in some of the other the, the big two books or anything like that. So yeah, it's, really, it's definitely got like a unique look to it, which yeah. I really, really appreciate it. It doesn't just not your your average kind of balloon and in, in different whatever the average font that you usually see. Um yeah. yeah. Cool. Right. Another share then for you. Here we go. This is this is your Kickstarter page. Just check see. to see that I'm in the right place. Boom, there we are. Here it is. Ah. All right. So we are currently 66, 68 backers with mm-hmm. 22. That's a really, that's a good amount, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Let me just knock this into dollars for everybody. There you go. Uh, so it's Canadian dollars. So Canadian. So what are we at, Canadian? Almost at two thousand. 
Yeah, so that's one thousand nine hundred eighty-six uh, Canadian dollars and twenty-nine cents uh, mm -hmm. against a target of seven fifty yep. or seven five hundred, I should say. Uh -huh. Twenty-two days to go, so you've already create, you've already got. What's that? Nearly. I think nearly, we're twenty-six percent yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. That. It's, a, it's a good shout when you yeah. think you know you've still got a huge amount to go. Mm -hmm. uh, um where are we at so let's have a quick look at some of the pledges um sure, nice yeah. looking at there so you there you go you can back it because you believe in it thanks very much pledge a little bit there you get uh your pdf of issue two mm -hmm. uh, estimated delivery for that is october um seven dollars more you get your digital issue of number one as well yeah. as number two, I take it that is, yeah? Uh, I just put in an option for oh. uh, just if you just want to, like, you're not sure about it, you just want to read the first issue, then you can yeah. do that there. Right. And then the second option, well, digital capture, so you can get both of them. Yeah, yeah, cool. So yeah. for 14, $14, you get the, the pair, both as digitals. Um, 15 or more gets you the print, so mm -hmm. get you the, the hard copy for those people that like comics in the hand. Gotta say, I'm a comics in the hand kind of guy. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, ships anywhere around the world. Is that is that is that one of the kind of problems we're dealing as a crown funder, or do you have fulfillment centers in other countries? Uh, this is my first time going to be fulfilling <laughs> Kickstarter. Ah. Like, like I mentioned, my first one was digital right. only. But there's a place in Toronto, Canada. I don't know where yeah, it's, it's called. Your garage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but uh, chit chats is like they're uh um they offer like pretty heavily discounted rates on uh shipping so cool yeah we can get a, a little bit cheaper uh maybe not so much for you guys across the pond but um yeah, canada and u.s pretty reasonable shipping rates i think cool yeah. excellent and again for the same amount 15 dollars, you get the print issue number one which you showed earlier mm -hmm. which looks great to be fair um there you go for the 30 dollars you get issue one both print and digital mm -hmm. oh man there's some really really good um and, and it's affordable so i really like that uh um, yeah and if you get the print catch-up you'll get a free print oh, by uh k baird who is yeah. the colorist that we mentioned earlier she's yep. also an amazing illustrator so yeah, if you scroll down a little bit more, you can see the print that you'll get, which let me see. Looks oh, awesome. the print. oh, there's Burpo doing his thing. There he is. <laughs> Where am I going? Tell me when I hit that. Okay. Oh, that's a brutal scene. Uh, there's a little more from issue one preview. You'll hit the. Ah, here we are. Here we go. There it is. Yeah, uh, you know, that's that's gorgeous. That just shows the level of intent. That shows how evil Bradley is just by, just by that pause. I mean, he's that look at the look at the amount of effort he's putting mm -hmm. into creating the AI just so he can take a, a hammer to him. Yep. That's, that's, <laughs> and I love the fact he's wearing his slippers and his socks. Bless him. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He wears that outfit throughout the whole issue, which again, and you, I find and you said this, very amusing. <laughs> I was going to say this is based on you. So does that mean you're wearing slippers and socks right now? I am actually. I put on like a nice <laughs> shirt because I was doing this, but uh, I, got my, I got my Batman robe right here. I wear my slippers. Uh, oh, I guess my slippers are upstairs. But yeah, this is my work outfit. Usually my pajamas, my Batman robe, and my slippers. Yeah, bless. Excellent. That's a really. I like that. That's a lot. I, I think that's a great panel. Mm -hmm. great. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. And there you go. You can get drawn into the comic. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That we, that was a pretty uh popular reward yeah. um, for the last one. So you can see some examples right there from the last issue. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So uh, am I right in suggesting that this is your second Kickstarter then? Total. Mm -hmm. If you had the first one issue one and then issue two, yeah? Yep. Does the um what what sort of things did you learn from the first one? That you can take forward on you know second. uh the first one was a goal of 1200 canadian um right. so it was a lot more relaxed i guess because I, I i hit that goal pretty early on um so this time for you know printing it um mm -hmm. getting a much larger funding goal 
um, fulfillment. It feels like it's my first time all over again. So uh, I did a lot of prep, like, like um, you know, scheduling a lot of podcast interviews. Um, really? You should, I know a good one you should be on. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, no, sorry. I'm on it. Uh, yeah, just a lot, a lot of love press uh you know uh creating a, a press release blasting that out um just um i think the biggest thing that's been a huge help is uh getting involved in the indie creator community especially on twitter mm -hmm. like there's a lot a lot of really supportive people out there that want to see your book succeed and do well mm -hmm. um and if you know um they're there to help and if you kind of help as well they're everybody's just lifting each other up so yeah. um yeah so there you go you can follow it uh, Matt, um, there the t Twitter address is um, there. Um, it is. Cool, excellent. There you go. And you've got your Sunday name as well, there, the full thing. Oh, cool. Uh -huh, yeah. um, and then there is the Kickstarter address if you want to go check it out. Or you could simply yeah. just go to Kickstarter and type in ID 10T, and that will take you to where you need to go. It is mm -hmm. that simple. Yeah. All right. It is that easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> hey, I got it for the show, right? So if I can do it, eh, I'm gonna have it. That Excellent. easy. It's that easy. There you go. Brilliant. Okay. Matt, thank you so much for spending the time. I really do appreciate it. Um, good luck with your book. Thank you. Um, I'm sure it'll do fantastic. Oh, um, thank you. And we can go from there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank That's you for it. having me on. Good I had a blast morning. talking to you. Cool. Don't forget to check out the UCPN for all your favorite shows, including the TDC, the Definitive Crusade. And of course, if you like a little, your books a little bit old school, you've got the old timers comic book show where the hosts aren't old, but the comics most certainly are. There you go. Check that one out if you are a fan of such. I've been your host, Johnny Machine Hughes, and as always, adios. Visit UndercoverCapes.com for the latest and greatest podcasts via the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Also visit our parent company website, ComicCrusaders.com, all about comic pop culture. <laughs>